Hi, welcome to World of Vision 360. This is part three of automated modeling. If you haven't watched part one and two, please watch it through the link in description. All right, let's get started. So, what exactly happened in automated modeling to create the shape? What are the things that used to get this shape? Well, if you observe our automated modeling setup here we got two phases we connected that is here one phase and here one another phase and it created line of sight from that phase to this phase directly and with the obstacles it just tried to avoid those obstacles and it turned this geometry these directions if you closely observe this geometry there are cubical small cubical shapes so what it will do is it will assume this entire space within the study as small cubes and it will remove cube by cube and it will get these shapes first what it will do is it will create three different such shapes and it creates and removes the volume for each alternative for alternative one if you see it has created this shape and it when you uh, hover your mouse in this direction it just removes the material and if you hover your mouse to the right side direction it adds volume and adds geometry same goes for alternative two and three so these three shapes we got and final four five six it is just a difference with the interface geometry so if you see uh, this connection between the preserves and the generated body it is uh, here for one two three it is smooth and uh, four five six it is orthogonal it is what it did Do note that you cannot connect internal phases. You can only connect external phases because if you connect this uh, internal phases, what it will do is it will come from the inside and it will try to connect uh, these phases. That won't uh, give you a uh, good and accurate results. There is two 3D model comparison between conventional automated modeling and generative design when it comes to weight for conventional model it will be slightly high for automated modeling for this speed bracket we got 91 grams and for generative design it is 65 grams which is uh generative design is the win in this criteria when it comes to manufacturability Conventional and automated modeling both are iterative. When it comes to generative design, it is definitive. So whatever the model you pick from the outcomes, so you can pick definitive manufacturing process. When it comes to simulation, both conventional and automated modeling are iterative. And generative design, it is definitive. So whatever the objectives that you set, it is close to that. Conventional, it is completely iterative. You have to iterate. And for automated modeling, it is also iterative. Here, if you see the factor of safety for automated modeling, we got 0.369. And for generative design, it is 1.037. And Time for 3D modeling generation for conventional is very time taking process because it completely depends on the individual person. When it comes to automated modeling, it is very less time taking. So within 2 to 10 minutes, you can get the outcomes. When it comes to generative design, it is a considerably time taking process because you need to set up things and uh, it takes some time to generate the outcomes and then you need to filter the outcomes to pick the uh, 
decide the outcome from that so usually it takes 10 to 12 hours when it comes to outcomes for these uh, model comparison for conventional it is one or two you can create uh, it depends on completely individual he can create uh, three or four models also but considerably one or two models when it comes to automated modeling it created us six models when it comes to generative design more than six outcomes are possible the best example for this automated modeling are you can use this process to connect two brackets you can use this to reinforcement of ribs and housing for components automatic modeling the best practices are you need to ensure the symmetry before solving you just ensure that it is symmetrical if there is no symmetry you can avoid it if there is symmetry you just ensure that little uh, error and make sure your model is symmetrical to get the best outcomes and make sure you split phases like we did earlier it is a must and should criteria and when it comes to advantages it helps to generate ideas quickly shows am generation speed you don't need uh, design conditions material manufacturing knowledge outcome promotion is super fast when it comes to disadvantages we need to set the offset for phases like we did earlier we need to set those offsets then only it will be like compensated for the final outcome so whatever the changes you make in uh, before this automated modeling you need to regenerate to get the outcomes updated and one more thing is after two weeks the results will be deleted you need to regenerate again so these are the some disadvantages overall am is a powerful tool that can help you save time explore new ideas make better design decisions this is all about automated modeling i hope you enjoyed all these three videos if you have any questions do not forget to comment i would love to hear the feedback of these videos from you thank you so much for watching till the end